Hello everybody and Merry Christmas in a way. Um, I don't have any content uh, today that I really want to share for now. Um, the jerseys that I got for Christmas I will cover in a separate video probably tomorrow but I thought it might be time to look at my collection again and of the club jerseys there's really only Milan and Lask jerseys left uh, and I had enough of Milan at the moment. They need to start winning again before I go to my final few Milan jerseys, one of which is hanging actually here. That one, is the, I think it's the newest one that I have. Uh, the last jerseys, I have a few more that I want to run through and today we're going to go through a special one. As you may know or not know, Lask has a similar jersey as Juventus with black and white stripes. I have one here. Uh, also one that I haven't covered here, so those, the, these are the stripes, but when I actually started being um, a fan of LASK, uh, meaning going to the stadium, they actually played in white jerseys and then they switched in 95, I want to say, they finally got striped jerseys and everyone loved the striped jerseys. And they were wearing them right until the 97-98 season, um, at which point they already were with Reebok before they were at the Adidas. I think they had a short umbro period or whatever. And then Reebok put out for the 98 99 season, they put out the new shirt. And uh, at that point, Lask was the only Reebok team in Austria. And in addition, Lask was a true challenger. We got the coach Otto Baric, who made had so much success with Salzburg, putting them to the UEFA Cup final, winning two championships with them. We had a great team at that point with all the Norwegian stars, um, Gea Frigord, uh, Vida Rieseth, um, Rune Tongen uh, was in there. Then we had uh, Jerzy Bzemzek, current Polish national team coach. It's so weird if I see him in, in the Nations League. Um, we also had Peter Stöger, uh, who is now coach who he was coach at Dortmund earlier this year. I had a long stint with um, uh, Köln. And yeah, um, it was a team that everyone thought could challenge uh, Stuttgart for the championship. And maybe because of that reason, Reebok wanted to not only show off the temple, but get a special shirt. And what they got is maybe the least last shirt that I have as a proper home shirt it is this one white with red accents um, initially I never liked it um, it looks okay but it wasn't I never like as a Lask jersey the only thing that makes it a Lask jersey is this crest and this sponsor which was the classic 90 sponsor for me this is Spitz it's um, fruit juice uh, maker from Linz uh, that's the classic sponsor. Um, it was always worn with white pants, which I don't like this. Only I can remember once uh, at Steyrt it was worn with black pants and this was the look that I liked better. This paired with black pants, great look. Uh, and I actually have exactly those black pants that were gold because I have the corresponding away jersey, which I'll show you in the next video. Um, the style is actually not that bad i mean the jersey if you uh ignore the fact that it should be black and white stripes i think it's a really nice jersey white with the red and a little bit black in there the black is a little bit too little uh to my liking really nicely also um there should be the bundesliga logo austrian bundesliga logo so that's why this is empty but it all makes a lot of sense um i also like this uh shoulder band really nicely done with the Reebok logos I mean it's uh, some corporate branding but I actually don't mind it especially the red is really popping and I said it before uh, since the colors of Upper Austria are red and white also the colors of Linz are red, red and white in that sense it makes sense and this was kind of the time when Lusk just bought out the local rival without ever getting rid of them because the fans went to form another team and they got back but um, that's a story for another day I should make a whole Lusk story videos uh, to get the story of this team known to the world outside of Austria it is 
of one of the craziest stories I think of almost any soccer team. Yeah, and the other interesting thing is is all this this patterning in here, these L's. But this is not for last. This is really just it looks a little bit like Tetris, if you recall what Tetris is. Uh, the Reebok logo is Rafe Stone Boss. This is actually printed on, and. As I said, I really disliked this jersey for a long time, but I remember, um, I guess I should uh, give you a little history update. Um, we only wore this for the first half of the 98-99 season. We never wore this in 99. Uh, because our president, we had this great team, we were challenging for first spot. I remember there was this game against Sturm Graz, first against second. On the line, only a point separating us. Uh, 20,000 people, meaning the stadium, absolutely full, the fullest I've ever seen it. Um, and then it all falls apart. The president was a banker, was a crook. He kind of made the books look very nice by adding zeros, giving himself a lot of wealth. Uh, it all fell apart around November. Um, he was fleeing to France where he was caught. I mean, it became an international affair. It became a huge mess, everything. And in summer, uh, in the end of winter, they had to sell off players too because suddenly Lusk, who had this super expensive team, were falling apart. I mean, all the good players needed to be sold uh, in order to save something. And so a season that where we could have challenged for the championship ended up um, being only finishing in sixth place, but we made it to the cup final. But more on this. When I talk about this jersey, because that was then then the in one in ninety nine, uh, Puma took over with kind of a cheap sponsorship deal at the first because Reebok also also went away. They didn't want to have anything to do with Lusk anymore at that point. So yeah, so this was only worn in uh, ninety eight, and that's why I got this jersey. Um, it is it was sold um, as you know. Uh, sold off for cheap for two reasons a it was not the current jersey anymore and b what the player stöger was not playing there anymore but that was not and i actually was uh it was funny because when stöger played for austria wien and rapid wien and so on i didn't like him that much but i got i learned quickly that he's actually quite a nice, funny personality when he was at lusk and ever since i really like him and i hope he does well so i'm i was actually happy to get this stöger jersey if i look at the number it doesn't look uh, it's, it's easy, a little bit old, but here's the other reason why I got this for half price because there was a misprint. You see this black stripe, that's why I got it for ch really cheap. And I said, Okay, let's get it. It's part of Lusk history, not the most glorious. It was about to become the most glorious, it was not, it was not the most glorious one, but maybe that was a good because then we would have kept a style like this. And I really like my black and white stripes, okay. That was a lot of talking about this jersey. Again, the numbering style is quite kind of interesting with the Reebok logos and uh, the name below. This was, oops, you can, the name below you. Um, that was unique to Austria at that moment. Um, now that I see it here, the 20 hmm, comes off a little bit. But yeah, it's not that bad. It's a flock print, so really nice. As I said, a lot of Lusk history. I don't actually like that. That, that, that that's one thing that drives me nuts. I want that the color goes lower. That this white is not showing. <laughs> but that's the perfectionist in me. On the front it looks almost okay except here for the shoulders. Again, lots of history attached with this shirt. Uh, let, let me know how you like this shirt. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and the shirt. Subscribe to my channel right around here. And I have here more um, playlists and jerseys that you might want to watch. Talk to you soon.